is XFL Week Nine Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast. is brought to you by Shady Rays. Go to shadyrays.com and use promo code SGPN for fifty percent off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. We're also brought to you by our NBA Playoffs Survivor Challenge. We're giving away two hundred fifty dollars cash and a hundred dollar gift card. Sign up today exclusively on the SGPN app. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, sir. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. A little late out of the gate there. My apologies. Not no, me. You were? Not not you. Me. Me. Oh, okay. I, I was late out of the gate. Not now. Of course, not you, Sean. Woo! Weed. Joining us to talk extreme football, he is the host of the USFL Gambling Podcast, Colby Dent, aka Pick Dundee. I will ble- I will bleep that. I will absolutely bleep that from the show. Of course, it's not the extreme football league anymore. It's the intersection of oh, opportunity yes. and something else. Yeah. Uh, we don't remember uh, the other. The thing. intersection between opportunity and and, and and fixing football games to make our product. Uh, oh, oh, give, wow. Put the X Files. Give him his platform early. I don't. I don't need this. I'm not the, the only show. one. I feel like the court of public opinion uh, is agreeing with me right here. Just real quick, Colby. I do have a hard out in, in an hour. So. Oh yeah, me too. I got the col- uh, okay. I got the college football experience. <laughs> right? Uh, well, uh, you, I mean, look, last week's games, man. I mean, specifically the Vegas St. Louis Battlehawks game. We had, first off, DFS nightmare. They don't tell you that the quarterback of St. Louis is not going to play. I know CJ I, I, Sullivan out there really felt the wrath of that. Uh, yeah, AJ yeah. McCarron was a late scratch. We, How do we not? Late scratch is in like 30 seconds before the kickoff. <laughs> for, for a league that wants mm. people to get interested because of gambling, because of <laughs> DFS. How do we not have guys uh, they, betting lines out? They solved it. The injury report exists in every other major sport where people gamble. <laughs> they also put out referee like information. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're basically like, hey, we like the, here it is. This uh, is this is the problem though. They don't have a big enough PR team. The something, something mm. because, and then the, guys, did you guys catch this overtime? So it goes to overtime. First off, St. Louis had no business winning this game, right? Some questionable calls down the stretch. I felt oh, bad for Rod to, Woodson. They're trying to screw over June Jones in Seattle. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, well, uh, when, when I think I saw the, the stat of there were 66, uh, thousand people that went to USFL or I'm sorry, XFL games this past weekend, right? Sixty six thousand. Yeah, and how total much of that the is whole in league. St. Louis? Yeah, St. Louis is like thirty eight thousand. So they, it's like St. they St. have Louis a lot is- of incentive onto uh, onto making this thing work in St. Louis. So oh, in I, overtime, get this, and, and we had gone over the rules. But all- isn't it working already? Like, don't we don't have to have that discussion? True, true. But but but. Dude, we we covered every rule on our original episode, right? Yeah, okay. And so this Vegas St. Louis game goes to overtime. First game in, in overtime this season. And uh so you start with the ball at the five yard line, and it's kind of like a, a you know, it's like a penalty kick thing where like can you score? The other team gets the chance. Can you go further back or close? Well, Vegas gets called for an offensive pass interference. Okay. Uh, which was a terrible call, right? And uh, th- so the guy sc- scores, but it's offensive pass interference. So it doesn't count. And get this, you don't replay the down, which we had what? never heard of this. So they're just like, no, uh, Vegas's chance is done, and and St. Louis wins the. G- it was, dude. Don't you have it, to it either reeked. accept? It just reeked. Well, of- so typically you have to either accept the penalty or the outcome of the play. Yes, yes. And this, they're just like, but it's a loss offensive of down. Offensive pass interference, loss of down. St. Louis <laughs> wins. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> And it's a new rule. And uh, we never saw it anywhere in the rule book Whoa. before. And how every, deep did you go and, though in the uh, Well, they don't overtime. give you too much. That's what's great. J Mark, <laughs> J Mark was 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 you know go, had all the rules. He's like they, right. they kept everything very vague. They did not go very deep into Where these rules. Where does J Mark stand? No, he's he's on our he's on really? my, my team. Oh, okay. Here. And, and honestly, Pelletier, 
Oh, CJ, wow. I think everyone, I you mean, some of the fans I've here. talked to. The entire to, spring football league community <laughs> is the alt rally world. Around. The alt world is definitely on to. And look, I had, I bet on St. Louis. Okay. But, but that was, it's just weird. It was just a uh, weird. I, Look, uh, certainly to have a penalty that results in a loss of downs like that, it's a little different than typically called. Maybe, maybe highlight that in the rules. Uh, no, I mean, it, the penalty should just be 10 Re yards and replay the <laughs> yeah, down. I yeah. mean, like every other penalty is graded. With like, the exception of like what, rough it, like uh, intentional grounding, uh, everything else is basically play the down. Uh, and CJ Sullivan, uh, host of the Bottom Line Bob's Ooh, podcast, which you well should be subscribed done. to. Uh, you know, he hit the nail on the head here because the, the 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 officiating was terrible. I I thought this is the worst week. <laughs> uh, I thought this was just an awful week of officiating, right? Dean Blandino for the past two or three weeks on replays has stated when they go to him, because you know they make every play reviewable, and he goes, "No, I don't want to see it slowed down. Real time, real time." And and I think CJ brings up a great point. What is the fucking point of replay? <laughs> well, didn't he say it's not fair to the refs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're supposed to be a ref looking at the replay. So you're, you're, it's supposed this to is help the, whole the point ref. of the game to slow it down to see what gets called. What? It'd be you like if I mean? you were supposed to use crutches and go. No, that's not fair. It's not fair. It's like no, we got you the crutches because it helps you walk better. No, you, it's not fair. It's to like, have those why crutches. are we cutting to the booth not, then? We understand <laughs> why they're still rocking the chain in the NFL. These guys are programmed old school. I don't want the technology. Get it out of here. <laughs> well, well, yeah, Blandino, who's never been a ref, which is even more hilarious. Oh, yeah. He's just sitting used to there. be a stand-up comedian working yeah. on his. <laughs> this isn't an open mic, Dean Blandino. <laughs> You're not working. Uh, what's the deal with us rigging spring football? I'll tell you, it's annoying. It is, it is frustrating. I mean, I thought. I mean, they're, they're lucky it's still football <laughs> yeah. because at the end of the day, let's be honest, it's football. We're gonna watch. We're gonna bet on it. D DC Seattle was actually the best game. If you're looking for the positive, that was notes, a fun game. That was that the was best game shootout. of the season, I think. Uh, defenders and of course Danuch, who I said has been on the take since day one. You don't fucking believe me. They 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 get down there. They get that uh, what? They score a touchdown with 31 seconds left. They have a two point conversion. Uh, somehow Danuch doesn't get the game winning <laughs> two point conversion. Defenders, uh, which Colby and I Great had as game. our money line dog, ne ne never trailed, Sean. We never trailed. Oh, relax. Never trailed. Uh, yeah. Brutal week for us as a show. It was our worst week as a show. <laughs> Even with that being said, we are all uh, Kramer and Colby, fifty-four percent ATS. I'm uh, fifty-four percent as well. Fifty-seven percent with my locks. So we're still above five hundred, even with the second half of the league. I started out four zero with locks, been zero and three since. And, Due and for a comeback. I, and if we could just before we get into this week, if we could just circle back to Blandino for a second, yeah, go for it. Uh, one, he started as an intern in the officiating office, yeah. and do you know what he kind of made his name on? Coffee. Fucking instant replay. <laughs> he, in 1999, like at, like a true capo, he was asked to organize instant replay <laughs> and oversee it. Uh, That's how he grew. To, uh, and then you want to hear this is the part where he definitely did not do stand up comedy. If he did, it was open mics. No, he definitely did stand up comedy. Just wait. I, no, no, I know, but listen to the way it shows up in his, his Wikipedia entry. At some point <laughs> around 2005, he did stand up comedy in several comedy clubs in New York wait, City. No, no, that just doesn't happen at, at, at comedy clubs. That means he was at like Joey's Pizza oh. in New York City. You know what I mean? Like, I, come on, we've done enough stand up. In, in, in yeah. That means I, we got to get a, we got to get a hold of Dean Blandino's <laughs> tape in the in the piece he's uh, explaining it. Uh, he, they had someone else talking about. Oh, did you know? Uh, <laughs> did you know Dean used to do stand up oh, comedy? No. And uh, and he goes, he had his his big bit was about how everyone when they play Monopoly they get mad at their family members. <laughs> and then the person interviewing goes, I never found it that funny. Maybe it was the way he told it on stage. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Hold on, but look, I don't know what was worse, Blandino, who was just atrocious this past week, uh, or how about can we talk about Terrell Buckley's game in game uh, well, situation? I mean, Did you see the end of that? It's over. I mean, this guy sucks. No, this was great. I this mean, was absolute. This was an Austin Powers moment where he he doesn't he stays on is, four in blackjack because 
Colby, this Orlando is Orlando scores. This has got to make you believe CT might <laughs> might have a little bit of truth. No, that's our education system, man. Uh, look, uh, Whoa, th- 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 or Orlando scores six, so, so they cut the lead to eighteen fifteen. There's like two minutes and like fifty seconds left, and Terrell Buckley goes for one. Mm, Fucking hilarious! <laughs> it's like you can go for three and tie the game up. No, 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 no! It's Austin Powers. It was like, sir, you have four showing. No, I'll stay. I too live dangerously. <laughs> oh, I mean, had, uh, you have to almost feel bad. Like, the, the, was there a single player that said, "Hey, hey the, coach"? The, the anna- what's great is the announcer's like, "Wait, what? What's he doing? What? 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 <laughs> it's like this can't be real. Somebody needs to tell him that he can go for three." <laughs> All righty. Hey, uh, before we get to the picks, shout out to Shady Rays. Got my Shady Rays right here in studio. And if I didn't have my Shady Rays, if I lost them, if I broke them, no big deal. They got an awesome replacement policy. Not only do you look sharp, but you're you're a sharp consumer because you know if you break your uh, Shady Rays, even on day one, they got you covered. Again, this is, we're talking about insane eye protection. Some would describe it as extreme. And if you're outside doing extreme stuff, whether it uh, be football, I, I'm still amazed that I'm watching, uh, you know, we get the MLB day games going in the office, get a little DJ activity going during the day. I'm still amazed uh, at, at MLB where outfielders don't wear sunglasses. Like, well, you don't want to get a sh- pair of shady rays. There was a guy uh, in, I think it was in the, one of the Marlins outfielders. There was a pop-up fly and he did, he did this move. Right? You're a professional baseball player. Your, your instinct shouldn't be to protect yourself from getting hit in the head. He couldn't track the ball. He wasn't wearing shady rays, shady rays. You look sharp. You feel sharp, great eye protection and exclusively for our listeners. Shady rays is giving out their best deal of the year. Go to shadyrays.com and use code SGPN for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Yeah. They, he was like putting the hand. It's something I would have done in right field. He was like putting his hand over his head to protect the ball from hitting him in the head. Cause he couldn't track the ball. It's embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. I don't want to make this a Dean Blandino pon- okay. podcast, but I may have stumbled into an athletic article. <laughs> that, uh, this might be the one that I read, and and shout out to CJ. He was the one who. who Blandino turned- was introduced to comedy in his first stint with the NFL by Val Gamble, an actress, rapper, and comedian. Yeah, the two were yep. colleagues at the NFL yep. offices when when he started as an intern. Gamble knew Blandino to be a quote fun guy. <laughs> Blandino was great right there. Oh, this a, he's a fun guy. We we need to add Dean Blandino. Uh, on the refs are terrorist t-shirt <laughs> Blandino <laughs> edition. No, yeah. just get his silhouette. Yeah. I mean, he, he uh, when I fun guy means big cock Blandino was known to randomly Long perform gosh. vanilla ices, ice, ice, baby dance routine from the Wait, music video. <laughs> no, he's just a, he's just a corny ass dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ma- Manhattan. He was doing stand up at in Manhattan's upper West side. What if that, Dude, if that wait, helps you're you. telling me you just start out going to, it says Caroline's uh, Gotham comedy. I've done Gotham, but I'm saying like practicing you, you just, their craft at spots yeah, like Caroline's probably, on Broadway. Yeah, it's Gotham, doing their open mics. Gotham yeah, this comedy is like the, the pay to play where you see if you bring <laughs> 12 bringer, people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His, his comedic, Blend, you know, that a bringer is awesome. His, his <laughs> comedic influences were Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Eddie Murphy, and red Fox. <laughs> what? No, Mike Pereira in there. You know, he, you know, he had them, you know, he had them edit out bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby was definitely in there, and then he's like, "Oh no, that's, that's too controversial." Who was that ripped? Was who was that ripped NFL uh, longtime referee Ed Hockley? Oh, was it? oh Hockley! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no shout out to Ed Hockley there, huh? Ed Hockley's ripped his. Uh, ripped Sean, ripped I mean, himself. Ed's Ed's kids in the league now. You know, you're not paying Mini attention, Hock. Sean. All right, let you want to pick some games? Let's go. All right, some of us have to be get out of here. All right, we got a, a again competition. There are there are snakes in the grass, aka the USFL. A little worried I might like the USFL more, but for now I'm still a Sea Dragons fan and a Roughnecks fan. I got both shirts on. I might transition in a bit when we pick that game. But first we <laughs> pick the Vegas Viper Houston Roughneck game down in Houston, Texas. Minus six and a half for the home team, minus two fifty on the money line, plus two ten for the Vipers. Forty three and a half is the total. Chalk has not really been coming home lately. It's been a problem laying points. Maybe the 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 the, the shitty teams are all kind of pooling together. Well, I, I think you gotta 
you start. You, yeah, you, you might want to consider Houston being one of the shitty teams. I don't know how really? they won. The, I don't know how they won the game with 180 yards of offense, but they did. Yeah, and their defense hasn't been amazing either. Uh, will we have Jeff? Uh, I need a bidet, uh, Colby, uh, for the uh, for the Vipers. I'm hearing uh, probable, probable, but right. I don't. I have no idea, dude. The injury report, it's like pissing in the wind here. Um, I I do think Vegas though. Yeah, there's nothing Colby hates more than disinformation <laughs> in sports. Really yeah. hates the transfer portal. Yeah, no, I, I, I look. I, I always nonsense. I'm very pro transfer. Like I thought okay. that the, the like you should have the freedom to transfer. But I also think it should be a one-time thing. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it gets out of hand. And Silver's ha- has had some moments where, uh, you know, Brandon Silver's the quarterback for the Roughnecks. When's the last he- time you had a long jump, Silver's? <laughs> Man, they were pretty gross back in the day. It Aww. was just like all like the leftover. It was basically deep fried chum. You, you, uh, you go to Long John Silver's <laughs> and then you go to your above ground swimming pool. Oh, I did. Yeah. I wish I had an above ground swimming pool. Oh, Only wow. the cool kids had above ground <laughs> swimming pools. I, uh, I, I, oh. Brandon Silver's had some nice balls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You guys, you guys are in your above ground swimming pool. <laughs> they they floated right to the top. While you were snorkeling, they just went right by you, hit you on the no, head. Oh wait, right? the snorkels were allowed at the above ground pools in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Silvers had a uh, he was seventeen thirty six, but two interceptions. That to me is what I'm worried about with this roughneck team. But then on the other side, Vipers have been turning it over. Um, I mean, the refs have been destroying Rod. Yeah. What Rod Woodson here? I, I think you got to. Rod take Woodson's Vegas. A, a pretty bad coach. Though. <laughs> yes, he is. Questionable in-game coaching. Well, uh, but uh, look, I think Vegas M- M- McClendon f- is actually like moving the ball for them. Yeah, and if they get their, uh, if they do get a bidet um, back, you could you could imagine a world where they get enough points to cover this spread. Uh, he did. McClendon did have a fumble. I I am worried about the Roughnecks' ability to turn over the Vipers here, but I think six and a half a hair too high. I'm with you, Colby. Fang Gang is back. Give me the Vipes plus six and a half. Let's go. Yeah, oh Kramer, yeah. what are no, you doing? No, hell no. I'm not taking Vegas. Give me Houston. Oh, I don't I don't care about the big number. The trend's ready to come back. We were just <laughs> discussing it. You know what? You know what? A lot of black you, coming up on the roulette wheel. We're going back to the red you're side. You're still a Wade Phillips guy, huh? I, I don't mind Wade Phillips in this kind of league. It's just, the right just, kind of league. Just, I mean, Phillips. I'm down it to is. talk. I'm down to is talk. Is he on vacation? <laughs> Look, I understand he he stood you up one time and it made you feel sad. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> down to talk shit time, on yeah. Wade Phillips, but it's tough to throw stones out of your glass Rod Woodson house. That's like true. Rod Woodson <laughs> is really yeah. bad. True, uh, in game. But, but he was a damn good cornerback. Uh, I keep hanging on to that. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of great players were horrible coaches. A lot of guys, girlfriends are in there. <laughs> Michael right? Jordan would not be a good coach. Playing doesn't make you a good coach. I think that's, that's something we I mean, to up. be fair, he has been, uh, he should have probably two more wins. The, the league didn't want Vegas to be successful. Well, but why do you think that's going to change? Maybe they realize that Vegas isn't a city for Roughnecks have clinched. Did we talk about that? They've right. already clinched. No, and that's the other reason why I think you should take the Vipers. Have they clinched the top spot or just the playoffs? No, just the playoffs. Yeah, so but they, does it really matter? You yeah. don't want to play DC. <laughs> no, but you're you're two teams make the playoff and you yeah, play the other team. It doesn't wa- matter. No, yeah. no, no, you you cross division. No, I don't think so. No, what? Yeah. That's not right. No, I'm, I'm going off how they did it in the USFL team. The XFL North number one team plays the XFL North number two team. You had told me this cross division thing. I I thought we, I thought we discussed this. Well, when I I was talking to with a couple of other XFL insiders, I was in the wrong. Uh, I I need, uh, how do the (laughs) XFL playoffs work? All right, let's, uh, yeah, see, Wait, no. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they I don't think they cross. I don't think they cross, man. Do the swords cross top two teams from each division compete in the division semifinals? Yeah. Yes. First so place team from each division hosts the second t- place team from the same division. That's insane. So the, the Roughnecks really don't have much <laughs> to play for here. The oh, Vipers well, then switch my fucking pi- what is this? Bang gang, baby. <laughs> but also the Vipers, aren't no, they man, eliminated from playoffs? Fuck that. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> they, they're selling this game's Vegas. useless. <laughs> Listen, I, I have I have <laughs> we're gonna be watching an XFL game with no playoff implications. <laughs> Wait, so uh, but see on a serious note, why wouldn't we just bet plus two ten if neither team has to win this game? Yeah. 
No, give give me Houston. <laughs> give me Houston. I'm staying on. We Houston. are taking. We're taking the Vipers. Good good call by you guys, but I. It's it's you can't trust this XFL. You can't trust this XFL. You don't know who which side they need. The, they all, they're all owned by the same people. I do. That they need to go independent after Let's this go, year, man. It's, is, yeah, is the I want USFL independent like ownership. Is the USFL right? like this? No, I mean Fox owns it, but Fox oh, doesn't care. They're just like, hey, go play football. It's entertainment yeah. for them too. They they're they're they got their their uh, toe in the wrestling pool. All right, Guardians, Brahmas, four p.m. on the West Coast in San Antonio, Texas, in the Dome. San Antonio minus one and a half, minus one twenty on the money line. Guardians plus one hundred thirty nine and a half is the total. This one makes no sense. This line makes no sense. Uh, San Antonio can't score. Orlando actually, if if Terrell Buckley could could understand the point system, uh, I think they would be. I think they would be. They, se- seven, or, he was the coach that also threatened to like uh, cut his entire team, right? Yeah, they and, have. and they've had like. Tw- probably, I think they lead the the XFL with uh, most. I tried to, I tried players. to tell you the Guardians were in it for a letdown spot last week, Colby, and you wouldn't. You you talked me out of it. No, they should have won the game, dude. They <laughs> they had more yard. They they were the better team. If you oh, watch you that are, game, there you are with your yardage again. <laughs> but how do you take the Brahmas as a favorite? Let's That's t- the other side. Let's talk it. about that. All four teams from last week that won the yardage battle. Oh. Lost all lost, mm. <laughs> and th- it wasn't by like six yards. It was by like 150 Re- regression yards. Regression is coming, so I, so I, I should have mentioned this is this just a heated XFL South me- battle. <laughs> we got the two and six. San Antonio's Brahmas still alive, and the one and seven. San Antonio's Guardians. alive. Orlando's been been uh, eliminated, but but wait, it, so they need the Renegades to lose both games, and they obviously need to win both games, yeah. and then they're tied at four and six. But are you sure they're uh, alive with the tiebreakers? I think so because they play. I think one of those games is against the Renegades. Okay. Um, but I think they would have to start scoring some points because I do think it would come down to some points. Uh, I'm on Orlando though. I think they're the better team. I just think that, that they can move the ball. San Antonio's offensive line is the worst in this whole league. Jack Cohn is just. He's bad. I mentioned I mean, he this was bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> where was he at? Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Yeah. He was horrible at Wisconsin. I think he's the worst. I mean, I don't know if it's all on him because the O line's so bad, but he's clearly, I think, the worst quarterback in the past two years that I've seen in these leagues. So San Antonio would have to win this week against Orlando, and then win next week against DC, who might not have anything to play for. Yeah, don't won't have anything to play for. Oh yeah, so they don't even play Arlington, but Arlington plays DC and Houston, and there'll be dogs in both. Arlington, exactly. So you know, I. But DC and Houston have both. Clinched, uh, clinched. <laughs> so they they're yeah. they're facing that same scenario. The All under right, so the mm-hmm. under has hit seven times for the Brahmas. They can't That's score. Insane. They can't score, man. They, play D- they, they had play- six points and all up until three minutes left in this game last last so week. But the Guardians, they're, the Guardians, they're no uh, run and shoot offense themselves. They're uh, bottom three, scoring nineteen point one so, points per game. That's a little deceiving though, because once they've gone to Storm in Normandy Beach, you mean scored. the guy who had five fucking turnovers last week? Hey, but they moved the fucking <laughs> ball. They moved the ball. And he has a fun yeah. name to say. Yeah. Listen, uh, he got here, he here. got fucking taken out by a German sniper. One of the one of the he was running. On the beach, he was the guy who didn't quite make it, Colby. <laughs> From our friends, uh, we go there and honor him at Omaha Beach. He what, didn't, he what, didn't what make it. What was the name the of the German subs? Uh, U boats. Yeah, yeah U-boats. Okay. oh yeah, what he, he got U boats. He got, he got mowed Play down. Benedict music. I like, the mowed- bl- I like the Blitzkriegs. <laughs> oh, Colby, Jesus <laughs> Christ! We got to turn this episode off. <laughs> All right, All real right. quick. I'm, I'm, per, fading, per, I'm fading Colby and his bullshit <laughs> pro German stock. Per our friends over at uh, Vison, Sean. Uh, much like the first game we discussed, San Antonio getting a massive percentage of the handle. In this mm. case, seventy four percent. Orlando's gonna win but, big, but about a fifty fifty split on the bet. What money. does that tell you? Sharp. People are coming in on San Antonio, can, but can, can I mention another angle? So Quentin Dormandy apparently was suspended earlier in the year for giving away plays, but he never really did. He was just really said that he was upset that he wasn't starting, and somehow they took it as that. Well, Orlando, for some reason. Uh, I, I don't understand why Paxton Lynch was clearly better than DeAndre Francois, but that's a problem. Pa- Paxton too. Lynch ends up on San Antonio, so they're playing Paxton Lynch this week. Who knows the playbook mm. for Orlando? You don't think they've changed it by now? <clears throat> I don't even understand how that happened. They didn't even like. Right, so you're making a case for the Browns? Uh, you know, here. give me no, San no, no. Antonio. I'm <laughs> saying the, the league is is the fix was like, why would you cut Paxton Lynch Wait, there? He was clearly no. their second best QB. No, I want to be contrarian. Give me Orlando. 
Yeah, stay in Orlando. Terrell Buckley. Yeah, I mean they can't score. You're right. You got to score points to win games. And just just to update you, Sean. <laughs> Great analysis. Uh, Vegas, eighty two percent of the handle, only fifty nine percent of the bets. So, so similar profile. Mm. What does that mean? Public dogs have fleas, well, well, but not it, if you're a viper. <laughs> the the public's been dominating <laughs> in the XFL. Time to give it back. Uh, Chad is lit. Uh, Alfred saying we need to petition uh, to change the playoffs and let the top four teams in. This is going to be awful if not. Uh, Cereal saying we should put together a crazy NFL parlay and use that money to purchase an XFL team. I like oh. that. <laughs> I like that idea. Well, I what mean, do we need? Like thirty k? Well, it depends. Uh, I mean, it's matches. They, they, they have a monopoly on the league. Well, we'll we'll trade. Well, let's bring that up to my. I'm going to write uh, antitrust the uh, <laughs> the FTC. A- anyone that's involved. What you? Ca- this is America. You should be able to buy. A spring like, league team. Well, why are you yeah. thinking so small? Yeah, why, why are we not just making our own league? J Mark, yeah, true. Head of uh, personnel. <laughs> cool. I he, mean, he we, built an RV. He we, can build a football league. Damn we, it! I, that's all this is. You just got to get players. Like, uh, clearly XFL is not doing the best job at showing <laughs> that they're the number one squad on the on the block. Anyway, all right. Oh, what's that mean? It means it's time to talk about sword vitality. Number one, when it comes to getting your sword ready to do battle for a sword fight, hey, you can't go to battle with a soft sword. I mean, imagine that. Imagine you're a swashbuckling man. Uh, you know, you're a pirate, and you're you're going uh, back to your pirate, I don't know, cabin, and you're there with a the wench. <laughs> and you got a soft sword. You can't do anything with the soft sword. Uh, but hey, getting a soft sword not a big deal. Forty percent of men by the age of forty affected by impotence. Seventy percent by the age of seventy. So again, the odds unfortunately are in favor of the soft swords, and that's where you fight back with sword vitality. Stop buying those highly suspect uh, pills at gas stations. Again, you don't want to. Uh, don't do that. Uh, embrace. Your inner degen, swing your sword loud and proud. Increase blood flow in ways that help you thrive as a man in the bedroom. Sword of Vitality can help increase your stamina so you can have more swings of your sword. You don't have to hide it, you can be proud of it. Unsheath your sword. Visit swordvitality.com and use promo code SGPN for a nice discount at checkout. That's swordvitality.com. Promo code SGPN. And we're also brought to you by Talkify. That's right. Again, uh, you've been out there in the dating world. It's tough, right? Uh, everyone hates first dates. You got to go make with the idle chit chat. You don't know, hey, what they're into. Uh, maybe they're a Dallas Cowboys fan. You don't want to go on a first date with a Dallas Cowboys fan. You want to have someone screen that ahead of time. And and again, you know, swiping left and right. You never know what you're gonna get. It's like a spin of the roulette wheel. Talkify is here to help your odds. And speaking of odds, listen to these numbers. Eighty percent of clients may, uh, met their person within their first. 12 matches. That is a great ROI. That is plus EV uh, dating. If I've ever heard of it uh, again, they screen potential matches, background checks, video interviews. They do all the heavy lifting. Uh, you're there just to do the easy dating. Talkify is offering our listeners 20% off when you become a client at talkify.com slash SGPN. That's T A W K I F Y.com slash SGPN for 20% off when you become a client. Talkify.com slash SGPN. Yeah, you got to be careful. If you, I mean, especially if you're trying to power through a soft sword, that's when things can get oh, yeah, seriously no injured. Yeah. That is a disgusting <laughs> act. We've all been young before. 9 a.m. on They're Sunday. They're trying to put a watermelon through a keyhole. It's just not going to work. <laughs> Where did you get that? Uh, no, power. Just, uh, the logistics uh, aren't going to aren't going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, that's really funny. 9 a.m. on you. the West Coast, Washington, D.C. And oh, I, I, I noticed that you were getting accused in the chat of stealing jokes. So I wanted to highlight something that you oh, organically yes. <laughs> created. <laughs> easy, easy pointed out that he thought the NFL uh, XFL team would be 10 to 20 K. Mm. Um, so yes, maybe I, maybe I was stealing some oh. material <laughs> from the chat. Jesus Christ. I, <laughs> we should probably distance ourselves from him immediately. Colby. <laughs> The Arlington Renegades taking on the DC Defenders as we in DC. We mentioned DC. Uh, they're not playing for anything. I assume that like they potentially you could say home field. 
home field because mm. technically St. Louis is still Lock alive to take it from them. Lay an eight and a half here, minus three ninety on the money line, plus three twenty for Arlington. Forty one and a half is the total. I mean, at this point, DC is a clear tier above every other team in the league. Yeah, I I, I think. What are their future odds? But, you to know, win the championship? some of the some of their players one twenty five. That's some, probably right. Some of their players got a little dinged up. Ta- Tayamu, uh, you know, got a little dinged up. Same with Abram Smith last do game. They, so do they win the championship like forty eight percent of the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Renegades, they win this game. Um, they clinch a playoff spot. So yeah. obviously, that's also massive wild. motivation yeah. for the Renegades. Uh, and uh, I'll be honest, like Renegades defense has been good all year. I'm curious if DC tries to like maybe you know ease into you know giving a uh, Derek King more snaps just in case something Which happens. Which could they, that could accidentally make. But then them then, then here's the <laughs> other thing like these <laughs> right. guys yeah. these guys have been sitting on their couch or working at you know Subway or whatever like oh. are they really gonna take games off? They're not Zion Williamson. They they're here these, because they like playing football. So I don't know. If, but I, what I'm saying they're like saying literally. I, I'm at, mentally or no athletically I'm ready. Physically I'm yeah, 100%. Physically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Physically, I'm a hundred percent. I just don't feel like Zion. Right now. The mental game of the NBA of basketball is such a mental game, too, Sean. Um, uh, we do have a poll question at Gambling Podcast: Who will see the uh, see action first, uh, Zion Williamson or Demar Hamlin? I, I love Some that. people were like, "Oh, that's you can't joke about that." I think Zion's hamstring is completely fair game. Listen, yeah. and Demar yeah. Hamlin, they, the coach said he's like recovering and yeah. is going to be participating in activities. People are so yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. joke pointing out. How no. how shitty Zion is, but joke. also it's also what a dog. Uh, Demar, Demar Hamlin's Hamlin gonna is. play yeah. football yeah. before yeah. Zion yes. plays basketball, and it's I gonna agree. be crazy. And we're gonna quote tweet that poll and say suck it. Yeah, Colby, uh, Luis Perez uh, for the Renegades. Talk to me about him. Well, Obviously, big upgrade from Drew Plitt and Kyle Sloter. Yeah, magically ended up on our Ar- Arlington somehow. Oh, wow. And and uh, you know, I I think this offense has really taken some strides. You know, now they're still not an efficient off like a super efficient offense, but they're l- looking more and more respectable. I was mentioning this on 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 my show was that I think they're better than Houston now. So as bad as this is that Arlington's going to be in the playoffs. If they win one of these final two games, uh, I think they're better than Houston right now with, with the addition of Luis Perez and then Victor Bolden, the, the MVP of the USFL. But what's, championship. What, what also what's happened with DC's defense. You look at the uh, past two weeks, they gave up 36 to the guardians, 33 to the sea dragons. I know they're a better team at home. And I saw their coach like saying, Hey, we need you. We need you guys to come out. I, I, are they going to get up for a week nine game here where they've already locked up the uh, division championship? I mean, they haven't I, lost at home. Yeah, and I still think like the big that, number, a little bit deceiving. Like in that game, Derek King drops a a, a, sna- a a snap. The Seattle takes it back for a touchdown. You had you had a, a two point conversion where Tam ta- ta- fumbles. Seattle takes it back for a touchdown. I think the defense, it, it, Greg Williams, you know he gambles he gambles hard. So sometimes when you get beat. He gets beat bad, but he also creates a shit ton of turnovers. So, uh, but in this game, I I I do w- wonder about motivation. I'm going to take Arlington in the points, and I don't think it's a bad wow. money line play just because the 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 situation here. That I'm with you. I I think I I think no beer steak power. I think uh, the, the, the snake uh, pit will be rocking. Uh, I, I think the defenders will be playing hard, but I still think Arlington with Lewis Perez against his defense with the defenders. That's just not as stout as it was previously. I think eight and a half is uh, a way too steep, high of a number. Steep. 32 to 18. Is that the score? Yeah. That's, Kramer, what are you I'm doing? Just doing some math. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm just I'm I, I'm playing I'm, blackjack over there. Uh, I I'm involved in some games of blackjack right now. I'm gonna <laughs> pivot off what I'm doing. I mean, no, I mean, look, I these this is the classic where you say you know DC is gonna win the game, but Arlington's gonna show some fight. Uh, that being said, I, I I'm gonna stand tall on my uh, my favorites and just keep riding them home. It's, well, you you it's, did it's, take Orlando as no, uh, that was being contrarian. Uh, oh wait, hold on, money report. DC ninety one percent of the handle, sixty seven percent of the bets. <laughs> Flip me over. Really? Got to be contrarian. Folks Loud. out there too. Like right now, you can get you know uh, Arlington at a hundred to one, right? And no, no, ten to, ten to, to one. Uh, no, ten to one. Ten to oh, one. Oh, that's, that's not a bad. Yeah. They're in basically. Uh, uh, 
I think yeah. Well, they're in, and then oh, uh, let's bet that right now. Let's and bet that. I think they're they're better than Houston, so they're probably going to be in the championship bet, we're gonna, game. We're betting that right now. And imagine if they don't play DC. Imagine if Seattle or St. Louis upsets DC. Then I actually think that's a fifty oh, fifty game. Give me the fucking. F- oh yeah, we got it. Oh, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, let me. All right. And and they're getting better. The Perez edition, the Bolden editions, really made that team better, in my opinion. I almost want to. I almost want to bet DC right now too. At plus one twenty five, yeah, he's, he's got a plus one thirty five there. I mean, you know, I'm searching around. <laughs> now, now that we can, uh, we can openly be voyagers. Ooh, I'm, uh, I'm voyeuring around. Yeah, I'm getting a hundred down on this uh, Arlington run again. Yeah, we're, right. we're all in on that. You're not going to take DC as well. They're so much better than everyone else. Uh, nah, hard to beat a team three times. They swept St. Louis. They swept Seattle. They're uh, going to be playing one of them. Yeah, but the, all right. I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, I have a DC future from the beginning of the season though. Yeah. I, I should probably check that before I invest anymore. All right. Last. So we're all on the Ar- Arlington would be a fun dog too, if, especially if you think DC might not care, but they're, they're going to win I, the game. They're not going to cover that. If we had teasers, this would be a great tease it up past 14 tons of value there. 12 PM on the West coast heading to St. Louis, Missouri, where the battle Hawks cook. Taking on the Sea Dragons. This is a playoff Huge game. game. Huge game. Uh, the futures. I mean, considering one of these teams is going to be in 550, 425, those are still pretty nice prices. And like you said, might be hard to beat a team three times. St. Louis minus one, minus 115 on the money line. Seattle minus 105. 46 is the total. If Seattle loses, they're out. So St. Louis can lose and still. Make it because, because they would be split on the, the tiebreaker, yeah. and they they would have one more game. So this is a must-win game for Seattle and St. Louis right now. AJ McCarron is not uh, not Obviously practicing. Not and they haven't released anything, so we don't can't know. believe he's going to play. But, but also the guy that filled in for him, uh, what's his uh, Nick Tiano? That was against Vegas, though. He looked pretty good yeah. though, and he's interesting. I don't know if you played him in, in uh, DFS, but he's a he's a dual threat guy. So yeah, he was a gamer. At times he looked good. At times he looked awful. But uh, numbers wise, he was decent. St. Louis yeah. catching seventy five percent of the handle, only forty eight percent of the bets. Well, which Uh-oh. of these which of these uh, teams has higher attendance? <laughs> St. Louis. Well, it's being I mean, that, played that's in where St. it's Louis. tricky. I think Seattle's way better than St. Louis, but St. Yeah. Louis has been helped like three or four games where you're just like, what, what's St- going on Seattle. here? Come on. Yeah. I, when am I going to stop playing the C drag? The Philip Lindsay edition to make some, make pretty what did they uh, give us a Philip Lindsay game one report? He, he, uh, they, well, they run the run and shoot. So they probably should, should have committed to the run a little bit more because he looked a lot better than pretty much every running back oh, in just, the league. Short of a gave Colby a heavy elbow. Yeah, it's okay. You know, Kramer's I mean, changing out of his Houston rough next. Get that Benedict oh, get that sea dragon Woo. stuff. There we go. Let's go into his Seattle sea dragon. Ju- you know, June Jones made time for us. Un- unlike, uh, yep. un- unlike someone else. Why don't we get him on again? Colby for the XFL play that piece of shit. Wade Phillips. Now that I'm wearing my sea <laughs> dragon shirt. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, the St. Louis, you, uh, they were, they were already in a fixed situation, which by the way, who, who does Vegas play last week of the season? You want to talk about Seattle the, and what could Seattle potentially need some help losing if they're tied up with St. Louis yeah. to get that St. Louis team in the v- Vegas could be the ultimate puppet team here. They know they're moving the team next year. Obviously playing on a (laughs) double a baseball field was not a good strategy. So why not use them as the pup, the the puppeteer? So see, I I think C C dragons lose by exactly two points. No, 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 Um, because they they have to be alive next week. So the game can be fixed against them in the Vegas game. Oh, so you're saying a bigger fix opportunity for Janucci. Cause, and I feel like everyone thinks Vegas, everyone thinks they're helping St. Louis. This would be the opportunity for Seattle to get this. All the right. game is actually in Seattle, but it's against Vegas. And Vegas yeah, was so the those ploy guys, as the, guys bring the bags. Yeah. Yeah. Danooch. Danooch uh. gets his taste. <laughs> I'm digging the Sea Dragons just because I, yeah. I want to ride with my boy Philip Lindsay here. Yeah. I am worried about fading the Battlehawks because one, the league is clearly looking out for him. Two, uh, they have a legit fan base. But this is the makeup week. This is the make the makeup they, they, they don't need the game. The game is really irrelevant for them. They just need to win next week and they're in. Yeah. Battle Hawks just need to win one of these next two. I, yeah. I believe that. Well, no, no, no. It would be score scoring difference. So Seattle needs to pour it on St. Louis in this game. 
Is it scoring difference overall or scoring difference in the games you played against each other? No, I think it's overall. And then I think after that's a coin flip, which oh, behind please. closed doors, that oh. would be so like St. Louis one, St. Louis one. Cause I I'm pretty sure like who, who has the better point differential right now? I think it might be St. I don't know. I'd have to pull that up. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that answer off the top of my head. I would lean St. Louis. Maybe I feel like Seattle early in the season had a lot of closer games than what we thought. Yeah. I, I look, I, I, um, well, they also, I mean, they're one up on Seattle too. Yeah. That, that also probably helps. Um, but Seattle played one point game with DC. I, I, I look, if, if it could come down to a coin flip, that would be excellent. And oh, it, the only way moment. we get to that is if Seattle wins this week. So, all right, you talk me into it. I'll take Seattle. If this you're going to do the fl- coin flip, you got to televise it. So, and I want a backstory Whoa. on the heads. I want a backstory on the me, tails. And how about we get rid of the coin flip and we just go to an arm wrestling match. Each team gets to pick some. Oh, I love it. Let's go electric. All right. Hey, time for the lock and dog brought to you by sword vitality.com promo code SGPN. Get that nice discount and swing your sword Kramer lock the, the, the lock cutter. That's what, that's what it's called after the sword vitality Seattle plus one. Of course. Okay. You know what? Uh, I, I like the angle uh, of Arlington winning the game outright. I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'll take, I'll take a baby dog. Give me Orlando to beat San Antonio. Oh, that plus 100. You're, yep. you're sharp. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Alfred with a great point saying that week 10 will be meaningless if Seattle doesn't <laughs> win this weekend. So yeah, they need uh, it. cue the yeah, X files yeah. music yeah. on that one. Oh, so you like my lock all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, how convenient. Copying the chat and me all at the same time. Uh, Orlando is really bad. Uh, I'm taking the Guardians minus one and a half as wait, my wait, lock. Wait. Orlando's really bad, but you're Orlando the is the Guardians. Uh, Orlando's really bad, so I'm taking the Brahmas, San Antonio. <laughs> Bill Snyder, Bill Snyder. <laughs> minus one and a half. Uh, for my dog, Fang Gang, Vipers on the money line. <laughs> oh, nice. Roughnecks don't need it. Could get interesting here. Uh, Colby? Yeah, we're, we're we're just uh we're locking up um Arlington plus eight and a half. Oh, okay. And guess what? That's gonna be my dog too. Give me oh. Arlington plus eight and a, or plus three twenty on the money line. Everything's wow. bigger in Texas, including Everything. the losing bets. Hey, it was a lot of fun. Make sure you <laughs> that subscribe button, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Get in on our uh, NBA playoff contest as well. That's a lot of fun, exclusively on the SGPN app. And uh, yeah, what do we got? We got a draft. Uh, we got NBA playoffs, official round one, and futures uh, picks 100%. podcast coming out. And then we're also going to do a bonus uh, NFL draft props. Yeah, maybe we'll sneak on Friday talk NFL. I, I feel like we haven't talked enough actual football. national football no league. Offense. No offense to everyone who's listening for the XFL, but thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. For sports gambling podcast, I'm Sean Stegging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Sword Vitality, shout out. Kramer, let it ride.